Hello and welcome to this AppSense Application Manager 10.1 overview. In this video, we're going to look at some of the new features that have come with the latest release of Application Manager. My name is Gary McAllister. I'm the Product Manager of, um, of Application Manager here at AppSense. And we're going to start off by jumping straight into the AM console and look at some of the enhancements we've made around our support for Windows 10. So previously with Application Manager, since uh, version 8.9, we've uh, allowed the ability to control the use of Windows Store apps. So here, for example, I can select uh, an app that's installed on this machine, in this case, Candy Crush Jelly Saga, and I can choose to block this for all of my users. So this means that when a user tries to launch this application, we'll see that they are greeted with a message saying that the application has been blocked, which is great. Um, but when it comes to needing to uh, control many applications, such in this case, we have a different version of the Candy Crush um, game, uh, it means that you have to add those in individually. Well, with 10.1, we've added the ability to actually block the publisher rather than the individual apps. So if we don't want any applications running from this vendor, we can select the publisher themselves. In this case, with Candy Crush, it is king.com. Uh, add that to our configuration for our denied items. And when saved, you'll see that all applications now from this publisher have been blocked. So we no longer need to add those in individually. So regardless of the name of the game, in this case, we are just looking at the, um, uh, at the publisher. So uh, we've added some more features around our Windows 10 um, and Windows Server 2016 uh, enhancements, as well as the um, features you see within the console. We've also added a, a brand new streamlined driver, um, which is uh, fully supported under Windows uh, 2016. Uh, now in our custom conditions, which were added into AM in version 10, uh, this gives us the ability to set very granular context around when we want our rules to apply. Now we've added our uh, extended support for Windows 10 here. So if you want uh, an application to be blocked or allowed or elevated uh, based on the operating system that the user is running on, we've now included the build number as well. Now this is because of the regular builds to Windows 10. Um, they're not uh, released traditionally like they used to be with service packs. So we can now specify the build number or uh, the earliest build number or the latest build number that we want uh, any application to, um, to be controlled on. So in this case, we can have wildcards in here as well. So that's some of our extended support now for uh, Windows 10 and Windows 2016 operating systems. Now, one of the other key uh, goals of the 10.1 release has been uh, an advance in our ransomware protection. Now, for things like PowerShell, uh, we've always been able to uh, block the execution of PowerShell, as we have here for my user. Um, and this is great. This stops PowerShell from running. It stops users being able to run scripts. But there are some occasions when users do genuinely need to be able to run things. So for example, my user has uh, a PowerShell script on his desktop, which he does need to run um, as, as part of his job for a legitimate reason. So now rather than blocking PowerShell entirely, we can specify particular scripts um, that we want our users to be able to run. So in this case, for my allowed items, I'm gonna add in this particular script, um, choosing to allow the file to run uh, if not owned by a trusted owner. Um, doesn't have to be the case, but, uh, but is for this particular script. And once I've saved that configuration, we'll see that this script will now run perfectly okay uh, with PowerShell. However, we've not granted access to the user for full control of PowerShell, and if they try to run anything else or run PowerShell itself, uh, then we'll see that that is uh, still blocked from running. Now, PowerShell scripts, and it's the same with, uh, with Java as well, uh, are bound by our trusted ownership rules, and we do validate those. So we can ensure that users can't introduce scripts into the environment that we don't know about, uh, and then the, that they can only run ones from, uh, from a trusted source. So what we've seen a lot over the last year is that PowerShell is being used increasingly to introduce ransomware into an environment. Um, but with Absence, we still would like to give the user the ability to run things that they generally do need to run. Now, self-elevation has been an option in Application Manager for a number of years, and this allows the user to decide if they need to run a particular app with, um, with elevated rights. So in this case, we've got the command prompt, which has been added in for our user. And if they try to run this as themselves, what we'll see is that they run it as, um, uh, as a standard user. So launching the command prompt, we'll just do a quick command here to check the user's privileges, and we can see that they're actually running it uh, as a standard user. However, for this application, we've given them the ability to run with admin rights. Now, when they do this, they are prompted to uh, add in a reason for this. And we can now see in the top left-hand corner of that window that they're actually running this uh, as an administrator and they've got uh, higher privileges there. So this means that nothing can run with elevated privileges without the user uh, knowing, again, uh, to stop kind of unwanted uh, applications or ransomware coming in and running with those elevated rights. 
Now we're going to add in uh, a different file here. So we've got a VBS script and we're going to add that to uh, the list as well. And when we save this configuration, we'll see that this also now uh, is allowed to run um, with those elevated writes. Again, the user is prompted for a reason why they need to run this file. And we'll see that that now runs absolutely fine. So we've extended out the file types that we support with, um, with self-elevation. Now we can also ensure that those files are only elevated with the correct application. So in this case, VBS is only allowed to be elevated if its associated application is WScript, um, as it is by default. Now if I change that to just a random name, OK this, and then save this configuration again, what we'll see is that now the option isn't there for the user to run this with elevated rights because that file association uh, has changed. So again, another step towards uh, ensuring that no ransomware can sneak onto our machines without our users knowing so, but also giving them the ability to run what they need to run um, without kind of um, restricting them too much. Now, <clears throat> um, we've also extended the certificate checks that we do for applications, and for a while we've been able to check the metadata um, of an application or an installer before it runs to ensure that, uh, that it's genuine. So here um, I've added the SQL Express installer to my allowed items for my user, and we can see that now the user is able to run this. Now this is just going on the file path, which is not really the securest method. So previously we've been able to add in uh, the metadata from that file, so things like the product name, company name, uh, etc., just to make absolutely sure that this is the application that um, that we want the user to run, and nothing has uh, kind of hijacked this or or taken its name or path. Now with 10.1 we've added the ability to actually verify the certificate uh, at runtime. So we can check the verify options here, and there are a number of options um, that we can select to enforce. One of those being the expiry date. Now we can see that for the particular certificate which this installer is signed with, that the, uh, the expiry date has actually passed. So this time when we try to run the application, we'll see that it is actually blocked from, uh, from running. So we're verifying that certificate at runtime to make sure it's valid, it's not been tampered with, uh, and that it's in date. For this one, uh, it's not, and therefore, even though the file name, the path, and the rest of the metadata matches, we know that that's, um, that should not be uh, allowed to run. Uh, one of the other ease of use features brought in in 10.1 is the uh, policy change request, uh, which has been in Application Manager for a number of years. We've actually moved this to being per rule. So previously this was a global setting. If you wanted to enable the, the on-demand policy change request, you had to enable it for everybody. So now we're just doing this on a per rule basis, so you can have it turned on for some users uh, and not for others. We still keep some of those settings global, so if you need to uh, set the telephone number or the um, email address for your policy change requests, then those still will be managed uh, at a config level, but you can actually turn it on and off uh, for individual users uh, or groups. Um, another thing we've added to the ease of use area is our auditing. Uh, we've improved and uh, enhanced the amount of data that we capture when we, uh, when we do capture our audits. Um, so a lot more information in there now, uh, which will help you with troubleshooting with uh, your initial configuration. Now if we look down at um, some of those things we've just had blocked, some of the areas that we've, uh, we've enhanced, we're now giving you such information as the, uh, the rule that decided if the application could run or not. So in this case, the highlighted one is the trusted ownership rule, uh, which decided to block the application. We can also see such things as the owner of the file. Um, in this case, it is um, our local user. And here we can see um, the new event that the certificate was not in the valid validity period uh, when it was verified. So by adding a lot more information into the, uh, the audit logs, we make it uh, much easier to, to troubleshoot and to uh, set up your initial configuration. Now, one of the enhancements we've made in our protection area is uh, to processes. Now, um, in 8.9 of Application Manager, we added in the system controls. So this uh, allows us to block users from controlling services, uh, event logs, and uninstalling certain apps. We've also extended that now to, uh, to processes. So we'll see here that the, uh, my local user uh, does not have the ability to end the Application Manager console process. Um, However, we can add this to our configuration uh, and decide if they are allowed to, um, to control that or not. So by the process termination option there, we can find the particular file. And if I go down to program files and find that within absence. So my standard user would not normally have rights to do this, um, but by adding this to my configuration, and again, we can add the metadata here if we choose to. 
we can now ensure that my standard user has the rights um, of a local admin in this case to um, to actually kill off that process. Now we're setting this here to, to allow the user, but it works uh, equally well the other way around as well. So we can take an administrator and actually stop them from being able to kill off certain processes. Um, that can be a, a local admin that we want to stop from, um, uh, from stopping the AV service or anything like that at all. So for more information on am10.1, please visit absence.com.